Hey there guys, today I'm on a little family adventure with my wife and daughter in the mountains just about three miles behind our house and as you might be able to see in the background the water has been flowing, the monsoons have been absolutely awesome this year and all the creeks up the mountains that normally will flow for a few hours or maybe a day after a good rain have been flowing for probably a month. So anyway, we're up here with some gold pans and we're gonna do a little uh, gold panning with my daughter. I am not an expert, so I expect to find nothing. I really don't know too much about it, but I figured it'd be a fun little family adventure. And then after that, I think I'm gonna take you around the mountains and I might show you some more clips of just some of the green hills and the streams and little mini waterfalls that are flowing everywhere. Well, the first item on the agenda is going to be doing some gold panning, but I did want to point out that little uh, old cowboy dam you just saw. It's kind of cool. That's called the Lower Sand Canyon Dam. It's all been filled up with sediment for decades now, uh, but it still holds a lot of water within the soil. But the cool thing about it is that, sorry, I got hooked up on some branches. The cool thing about it is that that dam was constructed with help from Marley's grandfather, my father-in-law Les, her great-grandfather, Papa Lynn, and her great-great-grandfather, Pa. And uh, anyway, so I just think that's really cool knowing that she was able to put her hands on an old dam that basically three generations ahead of her had some part in building. So we're gonna go down to a couple little waterfalls here and I think that's gonna be where we're gonna try our hand at some panning. Anything? Okay, this is like the last thing. Where do you think? Let okay. me see. Wait, I lost it. Well, hold it in the sun so you can see if anything's shining. Look, right there. You try to pick it out. Did I get it? Nope. It's just the flake. <laughs> You're a butterfly gold banner. You gotta get it in with the gold band though. There you go. Ah, there we go. Hey Marley, what are you propositioning mom on right now? If I get a nugget of gold, can I get a goat? A goat? Or a horse. Or a horse? Either or, but probably more likely a horse. What do you think, Mom? Is that a yes? It's a no. Which one is a no? But it's more likely for a goat, right? <laughs> or a couple? Between the two, yeah. Yeah. Marley and Dad really want some goats. But Mom doesn't want any. No, but we need that dog to have something to chase. <laughs> All right, Marley, since you are the first one to find some little potential speck of gold and Dad hasn't found anything, <laughs> can you tell uh, everybody what we've learned about uh, gold or what to look for? You want to look for an area with coffee-colored quartz. Okay, because gold sometimes is... Uh, in it or near it. Yep. Well, what else? Are we look in low spots of streams, like 
like this little series of waterfalls that I kind of think could be really good, like a sluice box. Yes. And what else? And gold is uneven shape and iron pyrite is geometrical. Okay, and what is uh, iron pyrite? Iron pyrite is fool's gold. Oh, okay, and, and what will it, gold will sink and what happens to iron pyrite sometimes? Floats. Okay. With a small enough flake, it will float and gold will sink. And that little flake we found of yours sunk, right? Yeah. And it's in there, I don't know if we can see And it. there's a little bit of a different coloring. Mm. Iron pyrite is a lot more gray and gold is a lot more yellow. I'm just making sure it helps me my struggle to catch it. I don't know if it's going to show up, but you can almost see it. Well, I think that's going to do it for the gold panning adventures. I'm going to send the girls home and I'll probably ride through the mountains, maybe show you a few more clips of the streams and just everything looking nice and green. Well, this is the next stop up the road from the area we were just at. I think I mentioned that was called Lower Sand Canyon Dam. Well, I am standing on the earthen dam of the Upper Sand Canyon, kind of like a pond. Uh, in Arizona, folks might call it a lake. But you can see this is the spillway right here. And it is just running. All of this water that you are seeing running is what is supplying everything you just saw us like panning for gold and doing all that stuff. So, on to the next one. Okay, so if you can't tell, it looks pretty dark back there with some clouds building up and the past month we've had, I expect it's gonna be a pretty good storm. So, I think I'm just gonna head home and if it all clears up, I'll come back up and show you the streams. But in the video, it won't matter because it just may be sunny and another day when I film them. So, pause one second. Well, it's the next day now and I am in a different portion of the mountains. The dam you see behind me is called Ox Frame. It's maybe 20 to 25 feet tall. You can see it's another old cowboy concrete dam that my wife's family built, I don't know, 75 or more years ago. And you can see it is overflowing. Um, that rain that hit yesterday when I stopped videoing, Unfortunately, it didn't hit this area, so the streams that are in this area that I am going to show you aren't quite running like they were about a week ago when I first uh, came out here to explore. But nonetheless, it is rain and it's in the desert, so we'll take it. So now I'm gonna just show you some of those streams, some little waterfalls, and maybe I'll find some uh, other interesting stuff to show you. Well, I think this is gonna be the last of the cattle ponds I show you because let's face it, they all look about the same. But anyway, this is called Onion Flat. And if you look really closely in the background, I think right there, 
um, it is hitting its spillway and uh, basically it's at top capacity it's hard to tell but it's probably about a hundred and fifty yards long or so and it has the extra bonus of having my absolute favorite oak tree up here in these mountains that thing is a giant it's really low to the ground where uh, basically the cattle go and lay under it under it but it is just a really perfect cool shape with a thick trunk Those mountains right back there, that's Mexico. Well, I think that is pretty much gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys found it interesting, even though I probably was a little bit all over the place. Uh, we were doing the gold panning, and then I drove you around, showed you random streams and ponds overflowing. But I can assure you there was a central focus, and that focus was that I just wanted to show you guys what an amazing monsoon season we've had this year. Uh, these mountains are about three miles behind my house, and depending on where you took the measurement in these mountains, uh, we have received between 10 and 13 inches of rain just in the month of July, which is why everything's flowing so nicely. And it is just a real blessing. I did a little bit of hiking around the other day, and I even saw some old uh, little hidden springs that uh, deer and Cotamundi and bobcats would likely get water from that I haven't seen flowing for years, and even they were flowing. I wish I had a camera with me when I was looking at those. But anyway, it's just been a really awesome monsoon. And I think it uh, uh, can serve to give us hope for lots of things in this world. Uh, but one thing I do want to point out that makes it a little bit more special, uh, if you couldn't tell when I was uh, driving around and talking about some of the dams, is that my wife's family homesteaded this area in the 1890s. And this cabin that you see behind me was built by her great-grandfather, so my daughter's great-great-grandfather, and he lived in this cabin, uh, you know, it was just a simple cabin that a pioneering type man would build, and, and they uh, uh, did a little bit of mining, a little bit of uh, ranching, basically they did everything uh, that they needed to to make ends meet. But anyway, I just thought it was a nice opportunity to show you uh, how green everything was, um, you know, trees that I thought a couple of years ago were probably never going to come back look like they are completely different. They're totally green and uh, it's just a real awesome thing to see. And on a side note, there are two things that I thought of when I was making this video that I've thought of quite a bit over the past year and a half and they are family and hope. Regarding family, I'm sure some of you realized when we were panning for gold that we had no idea what we were doing, probably uh, doing lots of things wrong, and I'm sure some of you have perhaps even offered suggestions in the comments by now. But I think it's important to realize that I couldn't care less about actually finding gold when we were doing that. I was more interested in the gold of being with my wife and daughter, just doing something special during a special time of year. And for me, that is worth more than gold could ever be. And the last thing I want to touch on is the importance of having hope even in dismal times, specifically using our monsoon seasons as an example that I kind of feel parallels what a lot of people have been feeling in the world for the past year and a half. It's very easy to have a dismal outlook on things, but I do think it is important to uh, look far at the end of that tunnel while it may seem dark, but to find that little glimmer of light. Uh, specifically with our monsoon season, we've had years and years of bad monsoons. We'll get rains here and there, but it's not enough to fill up the cattle ponds. But if you don't hold out hope, then you're never going to do the things that are necessary to be able to capitalize on the opportunity when it presents itself. For me, for instance, would be cleaning my gutters and cleaning the rain tanks and making sure all of my rainwater system is operating flawlessly. And then I've noticed the cowboys in southern Arizona have been mucking out their cattle ponds, basically getting ready 
for rain if it does come and there's no guarantee of it but i do think it is a better outlook to go through your life with that kind of positivity and prayer as well versus just throwing your hands up in the air and saying Ah, uh, whatever. Because let's face it, right now in our world, there are leaders and public health officials and politicians uh, and news uh, anchors that are just spewing fear and spewing divisiveness and, and just making people depressed. And I'll be honest, I think they want people to uh, be fear, uh, be living in fear, be in a dismal, depressive state. I won't, I won't go into why I think that, but uh, I kind of feel that that's what they want. But I think it's important to hold out hope. And uh, you know, if you're a person of faith, pray, uh, because I think it'll keep your spirits up. And I think if enough people do that, in the long run, <laughs> we'll all make it out just fine. So as always, I appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully that wasn't uh, too deep and uh, we'll see you next time. Easy as that.